Good morning. Welcome to worship on this beautiful, sunny um, Easter Sunday in uh, the season of Easter. We are good, glad to be together. It is good to gather and share in worship and praise and song and prayer. So thank you for um, joining us this morning and good morning to those who are with us via the live stream. Um, you are worshiping among us and, um, and we give thanks for you as well. Um, let's see, a couple of brief announcements. Um, one, to uh, invite everyone to breakfast. Um, we have breakfast burritos today, so you get to build your own uh, breakfast burrito and have time for fellowship and worship together. So please um, stay for our Others First First Sunday breakfast. Also, um, thank you to the box for the beautiful flowers today. Those are in honor of Tristan's birthday, so we give thanks for, um, for him and his life and energy that he brings to the world and the joy that he gives to you, yes. Um, let's see, our annual meeting is May 21st, so please take notice of that. Um, we've been having the, the save the date out there, but now we have official notice for the meeting. Uh, you should have received an email, and for those who don't get email, you should have received an actual letter in the mail announcing the meeting. And um, this is an abbreviated announcement here in the bulletin, but a reminder that besides um, two new elections to council positions, um, several of our other council positions are uh, up for um, election again for a second term. And then there'll be some items regarding um, some building repair and maintenance, and we'll need to um, discuss discuss those and be able to um, take action on spending money on those items. So please um, come out for the annual meeting on the 21st. Uh, we have a new business manager. Our previous business manager um, had to take leave um, because of just some health issues. And so uh, we have been able, thankfully, to um, hire someone new in his stead almost immediately, which is good at this time of year as we prepare for the annual meeting and, and our internal audit. So uh, we give thanks for Craig Nilsson, who's a member at St. Andrew Lutheran Church, and um, he is, you'll see a little more of a description about him and get to know him better in, um, in time to come. Uh, thanks again for everybody who helped with the annual cleanup. The lawn mowing schedule is on the board. You can sign up for that. And then please take note of the Synod Revival. It's a new event for our Synod. And don't let the word revival scare you. You know, I think to me that sounds a little, a little like, oh my gosh, what's going to happen? Um, but it's just a gathering of all of us in the Southeastern Iowa Synod, all the ELCA Lutheran churches, an opportunity for fellowship, for worship, for um, fun activities. There's going to be all sorts of things for the families, no charge except $5 for lunch. So um, please take a look at that and consider coming out. Um, revival is also a word for renewal, right? Renewal, new life. Um, this is the season of resurrection, and um, we, we celebrate that. And um, so let revival be a word of celebration uh, and an invitation to come together and um, as, as the wider church. Okay. Um, with that, I invite you to please stand as you are able and begin our order of worship with thanksgiving for baptism. And uh, you will note that we're singing a hymn uh, from the All Creation Sings uh, hymnal, which is a newer hymnal that we... Um, that we have out for singing and worship. And um, the words are new, but the tune is familiar, so you will catch on, I promise. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, by whose hand we are given new birth, by whose speaking we are given new life. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are welcomed 
restored, and supported as citizens of the new creation. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. Holy God, holy and merciful, holy and mighty, you are the river of life. You are the everlasting wellspring. In mercy and might, you have freed us from death and raised us up with Jesus, the firstborn of the dead. In baptismal waters, our old life is washed away, and in them we are born anew. Glory to you for oceans and lakes, for rivers and streams. Honor to you for waters that wash us clean, quench our thirst, and nurture both crops and creatures. Praise to you for the life-giving water of baptism, the outpouring of the spirit of the new creation. Wash away our sin and all that separates us from you. Empower our witness to your resurrection. Strengthen our resolve in seeking justice for all. Satisfy the world's needs through living water. Where drought dries the earth, bring refreshment. Where despair prevails, grant hope. Where chaos reigns, bring peace. We ask this through Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit reigns forever. Amen. Amen. the Bible. You heard of the Bible? Yeah. Okay. Good. Thank you. Woo. All right. Glad you've heard of the Bible. Yes. All right. And so in scripture, in the Bible, right, which is also God's word, we're going to hear today 
about living stones. Living stones. Isn't that kind of silly sounding? It's kind of silly, right? I mean, do, are rocks alive? Not the last time I checked. No. Mm -mm. They, um, they're cool, right? They have um, minerals and all kinds of different stuff in them, and, um, and they build up over time, right? And then they also erode with weather and rain. So they might seem, right, because they change, that they, that they are, um, have some life in them. But today, we are called living stones. We're called living stones. Do you feel like a rock? Do you feel like you're a rock? No? Oh, you could roll like a rock. Yeah, you could. Okay. So I bet some days when you're getting asked to take out the trash or feed the dog or something like that, that you might seem more like a rock than a person. Yeah. Where you sit and you stay and you don't want to do anything. We all have those days where we kind of feel like a lumpy rock. But Jesus says we are living rocks, living stones, and with us, with us as stones, Jesus builds the church. So if you've heard of this, can you go like this? Can you put your hands like this? There you go. Okay. All right. We'll make it kind of look like a square. Can you do that? Okay. So we say this is the church, right? And then you point your fingers up and say this is the steeple. Uh -huh. And then you open the doors and you see all the people. You see all the people? That's all those people out there and you too. So we talk about the church being not a building, but the church is the people. And God builds the church with us and we are living stones. Stones that tell the story of Jesus and God's love to the world. Because there's a time in the Bible where Jesus says, even if the people were silent, the stones would shout. And so we're living stones. We shout the wonder of God's love for us. Yeah. So I have a special picture for you. And this is, do those look like rocks? They kind of do, don't they? Does that look like a bowl of rocks or stone? Well, they're really, yeah, it looks yummy. It does, kind of, yeah, they look sort of like candy. But it's, um, these are a special kind of plant. And I'm going to talk about them in my sermon, but they look like stones, but they're a living plant. And it says, we are living stones, precious in God's sight. So you are like precious, beautiful, beautiful jewels in God's sight. And you're living stones that build the church. So... Um, I have black and white versions of this picture on the coloring table. So if you want to go over and color those in with all the pretty colors you see here, you can do that. But let's say a prayer first. Okay? All right. Dear Jesus, thank you for being life, for being life that comes out of death and for making stones that can live. Help us as your living stones to build the church, to shout the story of your love and grace. Amen. 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 All right, you going to color? Okay, go for it. The first lesson is from the second chapter of Acts, the martyrdom of Stephen. Acts chapter 7, verses 55 through 60. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Stephen gazed into heaven, and he saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears, and with a loud shout, all rushed together against him. 
Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold the sin against them. When he had said this, he died. This is the word of the Lord. The second lesson is from the first chapter of 1 Peter. God's people chosen to proclaim God's mighty acts. 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 10 through, or 2 through 10. Like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight, and like living stones, let yourself be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, see, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe that he is precious, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner, and a stone that makes them stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word, as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. This is the word of the Lord. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. But Thomas said to Jesus, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to Thomas, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his work. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. 
If in my name you ask for anything, I will do it. This is the gospel of the Lord. So just for fun this week, I Google living stones. But stones don't live, right? I mean, as someone who went through undergrad with and ended up with a Bachelor of Science in Biology, I think, I'm pretty sure, that stones don't live. But yet, yet in the vastness of God's creative imagination, there are always surprises, always surprises we can encounter. And so, believe it or not, I found two different kinds of what are called living stones. Now, one is a stone that seems to grow and live, and the other one is a plant that it seems or appears to be a stone, like I shared with the children a few moments ago. And you'll see a picture up on the screen. Um, so let's start with those plants. They're called lithops, L-I-T-H-O-P-S. Don't all Google them at once. They're really cool, but you know, wait till you get home. I don't want you lost in that rabbit hole of the internet instead of listening to the sermon. So lithops, now they grow in South Africa primarily. They are found mostly in Namibia. And they survive in strong sun, high heat, and dry dirt, dry soil. And they grow very slowly. In fact, once they grow, they're about an inch only above the soil. And the seeds are very, very small. In fact, in my office, I have a little packet of them because I was hoping they were bigger. And I was hoping that I could separate them and give each one of the kids a seed. But, well, they were just too small for that. So you see how that worked out. <coughs> but they grow very slowly. So from that very tiny little seed, they grow up to only about an inch above the ground. And they have a pair of leaves, which you see there with the little split in the middle. And they look like stones, so much so that even a trained eye can miss them when they're camouflaged by all the rocks that surround them on the ground. Lithops, living stones. And then there are the actual stones. Um, they're called trovants, T-R-O-V-A-N-T-S. We find them primarily in Romania, although they are in other places around the world, even in the United States. But in Romania, in a town called Costesti, there is a lot of them. Uh, so many so that they have started to realize kind of how special these are, and they've, they've built a uh, natural reserve sort of a museum so that people can go and visit and see these living stones and they are protected from those who might want a piece of them as a souvenir. So are they really alive? Well, they do grow, but they grow very slowly. But scientists can see that because if they cut one open, they're just like trees. They have those rings for each, you know, for years. They have those um, rings, those growth rings. But what they really are is compacted sand with carbonate mixed in them. And so when a good rain comes along and soaks these rocks, these stones, the carbonate starts to react with the water and it bubbles up. It bubbles up to the surface of the stone and it starts to add another layer. So the stones can grow another layer. They can grow a little outcropping. You'll see even on that one, there's kind of a little, you know, there's little nodules that are growing out of the stones. And they even will kind of spit off little tiny ones that will land and then just grow over years and years and years in their own spot. So, pretty cool. 
pretty cool. And I admit that I sort of just geeked out over this stuff all week. And I couldn't wait to be able to share it with you. But aside from being cool, there are two, and besides that, there are two spectacular examples of how God's creativity is vast and uh, beyond our imagination. I noticed two other things in learning about these living stones. One is, yes, they grow, but it's slow. And the other is their relationship and their need for water to grow. So if we go back to 1 Peter, where there's this living stones idea expressed, where we get this phrase from, Peter is talking about living stones being you and me, all of us together. Living stones that together are built into a structure, a spiritual house. So I showed the kids, right? The church and the steeple and all the people. And as a kid, I learned a Sunday school song, right? I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world. Yes, we're the church together. The church is not a building. The church is not a steeple. The church is not a resting place. The church is the people. Right. So we've heard that before. And I think we sometimes fall into that trap that the church is a building and not us, not made of living stones who are the people. And our cornerstone is Christ. Christ, who is alive in this season of Easter, we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. And when we talk about a living stone, I can't help but think of the stone in front of the tomb a symbol of death, of Jesus locked in tight into that tomb, this big, heavy stone, and yet the stone gets moved. It rolls away. And when it's put into motion, then life is revealed. This past week, you may have heard that the World Health Organization announced that COVID is no longer a worldwide health emergency. And as much as that is course for celebration, they caution. They caution us that COVID-19 itself is not over. The virus can slowly change, evolve. It can, in hidden ways, become something that we didn't recognize before and it can take on new forms that can still cause us illness. So COVID has left and continues to leave, according to the leader of the World Health Organization, and I, I agree with him. It's left and continues to leave deep scars on our world. Scars that um, are going to take time to heal. Slow growth of the living stones. It made me think, though, of the opposite, right? The rapid spread of the pandemic. We couldn't keep up with all the changes. And we experienced pain from that on a daily basis. Our heart was grieving things that our mind hadn't even begun to understand we had lost. There was traumatic and sudden change. And then the derecho, right? 45 minutes of storm and years, years of slow growth to heal and rebuild. And I think about so many in our congregation lately have undergone various surgeries. And when I had surgery for the first time in my adult life a few years ago, the doctor explained to me, listen, this is really routine, but it's still traumatic for your body. Your body gets cut open, parts of it get taken out or put back together, and then the body has to heal. 
and you're going to think you're fine, but, but you're not. Your body's working really hard to overcome this trauma. And though you might not see the progress of the growth and the healing, it's there. But you have to give it time. And I learned that because you might remember I, I had thought I would be off for one Sunday and Pastor Travis was here for two. I needed more time to heal. And then I think about our kids. I think about our kids, my, my nephews in particular, both of them, who went through when they were younger amazing growth spurts, right? And, and it's not just the boys, the girls, um, all of us go through these growth spurts when we're growing up. And as the body grows fast, faster than the regular, slow, usual progress that we go through, we experience growing pains. The body grows faster and it starts to stretch and pull in places. And our young people talk about how everything hurts. And it's not imagined, it's, it's really real. These growing pains are not in their mind. They are feeling the pain of fast, rapid growth that the body isn't quite ready for. And then, of course, they start to eat you out of house and home, right? Because they have to fuel that growth that's going on inside them. But we are living stones. We are living stones, and the church is living stones. We go through growth spurts and growing pains, and we go through slow healing as well. We continue to grow and heal, and our foundation is sure. The foundation on which the spiritual house is built with us, the living stones, the foundation is a promise of resurrection and new life. Living stones, something that appears to not be able to live, like a body laid in a tomb, or like stones that grow and have other stones that come off them or like little plants that come from a tiny seed and camouflage themselves as stone in their surrounding, which helps them to live. So at the end of Peter, we see that he tells us that once we were not a people, and I think about that. I think about like loose gravel, kind of on the side. Of, I live on gravel roads. Those dust, that dust kicks up, the gravel shoots. We get chips in our, um, in our windshields. And so not a people, but maybe just a pile of loose gravel. But then we became God's people. God's people, God's love, God's baptismal water washed over us and brought us to life, turned us into living stones through which we become the living church in the world. And once we had no mercy, we had not received mercy, thinking about being cast aside, right? The stone that the builders rejected. Oh, that gravel gets in my rocks, causes, gets in my tires, causes dust, spits up everywhere. Right? The stone that is cast aside becomes the precious and the chosen living stones who receive God's mercy and then build a church, build a church with their very own lives, their very own living bodies, their words, their actions, their service to their neighbor, their love for one another, their voices that call for justice, and their hands that provide hope and healing. Living stones that build a church, a church made of people for the world that God loves. 
And at the end, it says, we were called out of darkness. Called out of darkness. Kind of in hibernation, right? And dormant. Like the seeds underground that are waiting to come to life. Like the stones that are waiting for that drink of water so that their carbonate bubbles up and creates a new layer or a new little offshoot stone called out of darkness, and then we are brought into God's marvelous light, marvelous light, called to proclaim as living stones all that God can do, even, even bringing life out of death, life where we saw no life at all. A tomb that was blocked by a big stone, and then the stone is rolled away, and new life emerges. So I send with you these images of the Trovants. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that right, and the Lithops, and I'm pretty sure I'm saying that one right. Check them out, read about them, be inspired by them, and remember that God calls on you and builds with you a living, growing church. We may not see all that is happening, but God is at work. God is here sending us out to love neighbor, to love one another, and to tell Jesus' story. Amen. Uphold people in this community who have recently moved or changed jobs or schools.
who have retired or who are going through transitions of any kind, lead us in your ways. Glory in your mercy. Renewing God, you gather the saints at your heavenly banquet. And we give you thanks for the care shown us by those who have gone before us. Bring confidence and comfort for all who are awaiting the place you have prepared. Glory in your mercy. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and we praise you, almighty and eternal God, through our risen Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. he was betrayed our lord jesus took bread gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take and eat this is my body given for you do this for the remembrance of me again after supper he took the cup gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin do this for the remembrance of me Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we pray together as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as you know. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, This is only the second Sunday we've been doing that. So um, you'll be directed forward as usual by the ushers. And if you wish to remain seated and have communion brought to you, please make sure you let the usher know.
bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Share a sign of peace together. 